Hello, how's everyone doing today? Um, I just, uh, I know I do this a lot and I seem very intense, but you know, God is calling me to be intense. He's calling men, he's calling somebody to be, step up and be um, a Navy SEAL, a soldier, a somebody that is going gonna, is gonna to stand in the gap for him. Somebody that's going to stand in the gap for him, and I'm trying to be that man. I'm trying to be that man that stands in the gap. So uh, we're going to be actually in Hebrews chapter 5, uh, verse 11 through 14, and it's going to be chapter 6, 1 through 3 we're going to go over today. And this is, um, the, I'm, i got five points, five steps to spiritual maturity today. Spiritual maturity. Um, the thing is, it's like God will release you and it says in the Bible that you receive. Let's see if I'm. Am I actually going over that? Yeah, I am going over it. But you know, I'm just going to go ahead and give a quick rundown, and then we'll go over the things. It says you're a babe, and you only receive milk when you get baptized. You know, but then when you actually start doing things for the Lord, you know, you become spiritually mature. I'm going to go ahead and pray real quick, and then we'll start getting into this. Heavenly Father, Father God, God the Father, God the Father, thank you for. God the Father, thank you for everything that you do for me. Thank you for the blessings that you have come in my way, Father God. Thank you for everything that you do, Father God. I thank you for everything, Father God. I thank you. I just want to pray right now, God the Father, Father God, that you 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 rain down your spirit. You rain down you rain down the the peace and the love and the intensity at the same time that you know Christians are supposed to have that where people can receive this and they can do your works in Jesus' name. I pray. Okay, um, spiritual maturity. Okay, I see a lot of Christians, and you know, I, I hate having to be that guy that calls people out. But the thing is, is like, that's what God has sent me here to do. You know, I'm, I'm going to love you at the same time, but I'm, I'm going to call you out on what you need to be called out on. You know, it's not easy to get to the kingdom. If you want to be a soldier or somebody for God, it's not easy to do that. Okay, some people claim that they have spiritual maturity. Some people don't even realize what it is. And some people are ready and have maturity and they don't even realize it because, you know, God gives them something and they don't use it. So some questions you might have. What is spiritual maturity? Are you spiritually mature? Do you want to be spiritually mature? What are the indicators you're spiritually mature? What are the indicators that others are spiritually mature? Now I'm not going to answer these questions directly. I'm going to help you find your father. We're not even going to define spiritual maturity. Jesus and I are going to answer these questions by looking at five steps to spiritual mat maturity. And we're going to go to the scriptures, okay? The thing is, this is not coming from me. I want y'all to understand this is coming from Jesus Christ, the King. Glory to God. Y'all need to understand that this is coming from Jesus. He's trying to teach y'all something. He wants y'all to understand that there's a way that you can get in the front lines. You can get, you can do something for Him. You can step up to the plate. You can do, you know, great and mighty things. You know, the Bible says we're going to do greater works than he ever did. You know, where are those men at? This is holy scripture. This is this is this is real. You don't understand that you can take this to the level you want to take it at. A lot of Christians get lazy and they get comfortable. They get comfortable where they're at. No, the thing is, is like we need to strive for Jesus. He strove for us. He he took that ultimate sacrifice. He redeemed us. We need to show him our desire and our love for him. Okay, the first point I'm going to come to is spiritual maturity. Okay? And it's going to be Hebrews 5, and this is right from the Bible, the Holy Sacred Bible, chapter 5, Hebrews 11 through 12, and it says, Concerning this we have much to say, and it's hard to explain since you have become dull and sluggish, which is like lazy, lazy, and your spirit, and your spiritual hearing, and disclined to listen. Disinclined, I'm sorry, and you're disinclined to listen. The thing is, is God's calling so many people, and you just got this little radar going off, hey, hey, it's time, it's time, it's time. The Lord's trying to tell you. You know, that happened to me, I don't know, goodness, for about four or five years, the Lord was like, it's time, it's time, it's time, every single day. And I didn't really know what spiritual maturity was, but I knew that it was my time. It was my time to get things rolling for him. He was call He called me for four to eight years straight almost every single day. He was trying to get my attention, and I... You know, I fell, I fell hard, but you know what? God finally redeemed me and I, I listened to it. You know, so now I'm bringing the word. For though by this time you ought to be teachers, 
because of the time you have had to learn these truths. You actually need someone to teach you again the elementary principles of God's Word from the beginning. And you have come to continually in need of milk, not solid food. We got you know we want to eat that meat that Jesus can give us. You know you understand that if you believe in God, if you believe that your spirit's going somewhere, do you understand that He is so powerful that this world can is nothing, nothing. Okay, and then um, I've got something written down right here that I wrote down. Let me see what I got. it goes along with verse eleven, five eleven. I got this out of some notes out of one of my Bibles. So let's see here. Of Christ we have many things to say that are difficult to make clear to you. Not because they are mysteries, but because you are slow to get it. Okay, Jesus is literally, I'm sorry to say this, but he's calling a lot of people out. Okay, you people are slow to understand the truths. Okay, people are slow to understand the doctrines. Okay, if you can get this, Jesus will move you up so fast in position. Okay. And I know I talk about position a lot, and but I, you know what? It is a position. This is. It says in the Bible, it says our war, our battle is not against flesh and blood, but there is a battle in heavenly realms, and we are a part of it. And we need to realize that. That's one thing that you need to get. Stop being lazy. If you if you're saved and you're a Christian, why should you have to be taught again these holy and sacred truths? So. You know, the thing is, it's like, if we got to be taught, again, the holy and sacred truths, you know, what, what's going on? Let's, 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 let's build this. Let's pray. Let's read something from the Bible and say, God, let me receive it. God, show me something new today. God, show me something new tomorrow. In Jesus' name, Father God, God the Father, show me something new. Number 12. I'm sorry. Let's see. Don't be spiritually. This is more. This is the things I wrote down. Don't be spiritually dull. Seek him. Seek him. Seek him. If you seek him, he will come get you and build you up. People have no sense of spiritual things. Y'all don't listen to those trying to help you. I'm trying to help you. And what are y'all doing? Y'all are probably just clicking on by. The thing is, is like we have to realize that people are out there to help us. Happy with just skating through? You know, I, I don't want to be that dude that just skates through. I want to I want to do something for Jesus. He did something for me. He died on that cross for me. He redeemed me with his blood. What can I do for my father? That's what I want to know. That's what that's what I want to try to bring to the table. Okay. Happy with just skating through. Some longtime believers have made no progress in their walk with Jesus. Some people have known Jesus how long? 40, 50, 60 years? And where are they at? They just go to church on Sunday? They just they just go to church each Sunday and give their money just, just so they can get into heaven? You know, there's a war going on, and Jesus wants y'all to understand we need to reach people. We need to tell people about Jesus. You know, even if it's foreign countries or wherever it is, if there's somebody at the grocery store that doesn't know Jesus, and you do, and God puts you in that position to tell them about it, tell them about them. Stop being comfortable. Stop being comfortable. That's the thing is people are too comfortable. They just sit here, and they relax, and they get spiritually obese, you know, Go put on, go put on something nice and pray and then watch your spiritual muscles grow. Watch your spiritual muscles. Like, just go out and just be ready to fight that fight. You know, I, <laughs> flesh can't control me. I control this flesh. And Jesus taught me that. If you desire it, He will come get you. He came and got me so fast. I, I just, I see, I see. Just so much. I wish I could just tell y'all everything I see, but you would think I was crazy. So I'm just trying to give this to you to help you out. I'm trying to give it to you to help you out so you can learn something. If you desire it, he will give it to you. If you're ready to move forward, then you can move to the next step. All right, my second point. Desire must lead to knowledge, okay? You gotta get some knowledge. You gotta know this word. The word is power. Once you know this word, he will build you. He will strengthen you. You will keep getting stronger. You stay in prayer. You learn the word. You stay in prayer. You learn the word. It's that simple. And you keep asking him for new things and he'll give them to you. Once you desire that, when you learn it, that's when God really reveals things. Knowledge begins with spiritual milk. Okay? The knowledge is spiritual milk. You know, if you just start, oh, I know who Jesus is. I know what he did. Great. Okay? Where do you want to go from there? The basic is, basics is history, you know, it's Christian faith. Christian faith, all right? All right, let's look here. All right, these are the basics in chapter... Go ahead, you can get pause. 
I know I'm on my second point. So desire must lead to knowledge. We have, if we desire the Holy Spirit, if we desire Jesus, you know, we have to get into the Word. We we have to press in. I've been doing this every single day, every single day, almost I, maybe maybe every single day for almost four or five months. And God has like taken me from a baby to somebody that has spiritual muscles now. I believe that you know I can give a, a good testimony and a good a good word from God. You know, I believe that God and Jesus really takes over when I speak for Him. Once you have desire, that's when you learn. That's when God reveals it. Knowledge begins with spiritual milk, basics, history, Christian faith. These are the basics. Okay, I'm going to read Hebrews chapter 6, 1 through 3. And it is, Therefore, let us get past the elementary stage in teaching. Hold on one second. Let me get a drink. Therefore, let us get past the elementary stage in the teachings about the Christ. Advancing onto a maturity and perfection and spiritual completeness, doing this without laying again a foundation of repentance from dead works and of faith toward God. See, the thing is, this is I'm gonna make it real simple for you, really simple. D don't sin again, okay? Turn away from what you just did, what you did that caused you to sin. You know, the Bible says if your hand caused you to sin, cut it off. If your eye caused you to sin, cut it out. We, the, the, you know, the TV. You know, if it caused you to sin, turn the TV off. The thing is, this is the truth, people. This is the Holy Scripture. If you can really plug into this, you can find Jesus. Goodness, and I just feel in His power. Goodness, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. All right, let's see here. And then I'm going to go to uh, 2, chapter 6, 2. Of teaching about washing, ritual um, purifications, the laying on, on of hands, the resurrection of the dead, and eternal judgment... These are all important matters in which you should have been proficient long ago. And we will do this, that is, proceed to maturity, if God permits. If God permits, you know, God, I cannot believe. If you, Thank you, Jesus, for the power and the glory that you have, Father God, that you're raining down on me. Just that you, you permitted that for my life, Father God. I just, I thank you for that. In Jesus' name, thank you, Lord. Pray with the desire. Pray that you want the spiritual meat. Pray that you want to you want to go to the next step. Okay, it's okay if you're stuck. Pray to desire the existence. Pray what you need. God will give it to you. It's that simple. There's a God, and if you want it, He'll give it to you. It says it in the Bible, but you have to abide by Him. You have to live righteously by Him. You have to, when you repent, you turn away and you don't go back, and you live by what God says, and God will give you the glory. He will give you the power. All right, now let's go on to. Um, I will, let's see what I got here. Okay, step three. Let's go to uh, knowledge comes with responsibility. Okay, knowledge comes with responsibility. If you are a doctor, if you got a doctorate degree and you're uh, you're gonna go to college to be a doctor, but then you go back to your house and you eat chips and work at McDonald's, what does that do with the knowledge that you have? Okay, the thing is, use the knowledge, okay? That's how God gives you the power. Watch what God does in my life. You, I mean, what have you seen what he's done so far? Continue to watch what he does in my life. And then maybe that'll be a testimony on some people, and, and maybe some people will actually like me and open their eyes and start living righteously. Knowledge comes responsibility. We have to be responsible for what we know. If God gives us information, we need to pray about it. We need to ask him if it's okay to talk. We need to ask him for permission. You don't just go behind your boss's back with, and do things, do you? He is the leader. He's the king. He's glory, glory to God. He tells you what to do. Responsibility takes place when we realize God has taught us these things. God literally, when I when I realized God taught me these things, it was like a vision all lined up like a movie. It's like, in my head, he's like, yeah, I did that, I did that, I did that, I did that. I'm like, oh my God. I just busted out in tears. I started bawling because I realized that God did this. God made me this man. Responsibility takes place when we are able to grasp that our knowledge now requires something more. It requires something more. we got to step up for him. You know, just little things. God has moved me so fast in his army that, like, I want you all to understand, he's moved me so fast. And all I've done, really, is preach on the side of the road a couple times. And I and I study every day. And I pray every day for, like, the last six months. And he's, he's soared me through. But when you really want it, when you really desire it, he will, goodness, you're on fire. 
you are on fire. It's like, uh, my friends call me the torch because I ignite them when I come around. You know, I believe God's calling me blaze. I believe he's calling me blaze. Responsibility takes place when we are able to grasp that our knowledge and now requires something more. Now that you know these things, what are we going to do? Is our knowledge of God and His way going to make a difference in our lives? The thing is, is if we know the knowledge and we don't, and we don't follow it, that's our issue. If we follow it, He will, He will shoot you forward. You will just explode with the power from God. But remember, He can take it from you in a second, so you better bow down to Him. If we know something but it doesn't change us, do we really know it? Do we really know it or are we just saying we know things? Okay, when God actually shows it to you, you won't turn back. You won't turn back and you won't do wrong. You continue. And once you grasp it, will lead you to the next step. Responsibility. Okay, this is step four. Step four, step four. Responsibility must lead to action responsibility. God gives you responsibility. He's saying, okay, you know the knowledge. I'm, get, I'm putting you in the position to tell that person something. Are you going to tell that person something? Are you going to do that? Are you going to bring Jesus to their life when I put... I, I, I just redeemed you. I could put the blood of Jesus Christ over top of you, and you're not going to tell that person about Jesus? <laughs> That's not okay, and I'm here to tell you that. We act on what we have learned. Okay, the thing. Okay, let's read. Let's read Hebrews six one again. Okay, and it says, "Therefore, let us get past the elementary stage. Let us get past the elementary stage. Let's get the hunger. Let's get the let's get the strength. Let's get the spiritual muscles built up." Okay, and in six three it says, "And we will do this. That is, proceed to maturity, and if God permits." If God thinks you can handle the maturity, He will give it to you. But you got to pray it into action. you got to pray it into action. It's that simple. Goodness gracious, y'all. Do you understand? You can. You can. Anyone can. You can be a disciple of God. Of God. There is no greater army than Jesus Christ's army. Do you all not understand that? United States? Nobody. Jesus Christ. Glory to God. Somebody put up against Jesus Christ, they can't beat him. He's unstoppable. He's almighty. He's glory. He's glorious. He's the only one that, I mean, you just don't understand. He is all, he's all powerful. He's all powerful. Okay, sorry, I got a little heated for a second there. Sorry about that. We need to be obedient for Jesus. We need to be more obedient for Jesus. We need to take more actions. We need to do more things for Jesus. And see where Jesus takes you. Jesus is going to come back. And we're, I mean, y'all don't understand. He's going to come back. And especially if I get a church, if I get a church with some money, I'm going to, I'm going to find out where the, where the gospel hasn't been reached yet. And I'm sending people. I'm sending people because I want to meet my father. You have knowledge, but no action. A lot of people have knowledge, but they don't take the step. They don't want to take the step. Take the step, people. Please take the step. For Jesus. He got up on that cross and got whipped and beat. And y'all don't even care, man. Thank you, Father. We sit around and get spiritually obese. We just sit on the couch and read our Bible, but we don't do anything about it. If we drink nothing but protein shakes, but we don't go work out... The thing is, we gotta, we gotta do things that are gonna build our muscles with Jesus. Jesus wants to build an army of prophets. He wants people to stand up for him. Exercise those spiritual muscles. Test them. You know, we should get together and test and, and joke around with each other and say, you know, what's that Bible verse? Do you know this Bible verse? You know, you know, what's this? You know, what's that? What did Jesus tell you today? You need to ask questions to your brothers and sisters and keep them going and flowing for Jesus. And if not, you can call me, because I'm always going to do it. Okay, now my fifth and final step. Action will lead to maturity. It will lead to maturity. He will move you up in position. You will get where you want to go faster for God. Jesus, God, it's just, just, just wait to see what God's got planned. Just wait. Read Hebrews 5.14. Okay, read it. I'm going to read it to you, actually. Here we go. But solid food is for the spiritually. Spiritually. But solid food is for the spiritual mature. The spiritual mature. The mature. The people that can handle it. That's for the people that, that, are, that 
that get that, is the people that can handle that, whose senses are trained by practice to distinguish between what is morally good and what is evil. You, you, okay, when you get that maturity, when you, you're going to start recognizing when you're under attack. All right. All right, here we go. And we're back. And we're on my fifth and final step, my fifth and final point. You know, it's the last one. We need to pay attention right here because that's just this is a big deal right here. Actions will lead to maturity. When you step out of the box for Jesus, you know, if you go preach on the streets for Jesus, if you go start telling people about Jesus. Now, let's just say you start telling everyone you meet about Jesus Christ. How fast Jesus will move with you. He sees it. He showed me a vision. Okay, when he was watching me when I was a kid, okay, and then where he's going to take me if I continue this. Okay, I saw myself as a kid through Jesus' eyes. Do y'all not understand that? I mean, I'm not making this up. Okay, and then I'm on to actions will lead to maturity. We need to step out of the box so we can do, do works for Jesus. Actions lead to maturity. And with maturity comes skill. We learn how to recognize situations. That, that's a good one. Okay, the thing is, I know, when, I know when I'm getting put in a position to talk to somebody about Jesus because like, I can see it now. I recognize it right away. I'm like, oh, okay, I'm supposed to talk to this person. I'm supposed to talk to these two ladies. I'm supposed to talk to this man. That's how much like, God starts talking to you. Okay, God will literally help you and help you and help you and keep helping you and keep helping you and keep helping you. It's all Jesus. I'm just like trying to help y'all like, see this. I'm a messenger. All I am is a little messenger in a, in, in a big army. It's just like we're just trying to bring the word and try to build this, okay? So, we, so our kids, so our babies, so our, the ones that we love so much won't be condemned to hell because of Satan. Y'all need to realize Satan is very real. And he wants to destroy your children. Your children. We need to stand up for Jesus Christ. Okay? He's going after children. And I'm sorry I'm getting heated, but the thing is, is I love babies. When I look in babies' eyes, it, it, it lights up my world, okay? It ignites this fire that I need. That's a soul, body, unity that is going to go to heaven one day, and I need to stop Satan. You need to stand up too. Who else wants to stop Satan? We learn how to handle these situations. God literally will, you know... When you start getting put in them positions and when you start getting put in these situations, God will start talking to you. He'll start talking to you and he'll start telling you, okay, do this, do this. If that person's no good. Or, you know, you'll start receiving gifts of the Spirit. Pray for the gifts. God will give you the gifts if you pray for them. If you abide in the Holy Scripture, it says, if you abide and you look to Jesus Christ as your king, at glory to God. If you give glory, then if you abide, if you live righteously, God will give it to you. We become anchors. We become strong. We become, we become strong. We become anchors for the church. We become anchors for our brothers. We become anchors for our fathers. We become anchors for our mothers. We become anchors for our mentors. We become anchors for everyone. If we want to build spiritually, we, get, we, we will become anchors. We will become so strong in Jesus Christ that, that, that we don't even see sin. What sin? There's no sin. What world? There's no world. I look to the kingdom. The only time I ever come down to the world is to preach the word to you. We become anchors. We inspire others. We give desire to become mature. We bring glory to God. We bring glory to God. The anointing will rain down. Watch the anointing rain down on somebody. Watch it rain down for Jesus. When God rains down His anointing on me, oh my goodness, I could, it's, such, it's such an amazing feeling. It's an amazing feeling. It's so much passion and fire that gets rained down on top of me. I love it. All right, now my question to you is, where are you? You can get started right now. Jesus wants you to get started right now for Him. Okay, this is coming from Jesus. He wants you to know that. It's coming from Him. This, the glory be Jesus. Glory to God. Glory to Jesus. I just want to get down on my knee and just give it to Him. Goodness gracious, I'm going to as soon as I get done preaching real quick. Tell God you realize where you're at. If you know that you're a baby, tell God you're a baby. If you don't, if you don't see angels or you're not seeing things or He's not talking to you or you're not recognizing things, the thing is, if you're not recognizing Jesus, if you're not hearing from Jesus... You know, if there's not a gift that you're getting revealed, then tell him you're a baby. Tell him. We need to baptize people. We need to anoint people. 
we need to do things that we they did in the Old Testament. We need to bring it back. We need to bring the New Testament, like what they did in the New Testament. They baptized people. They anointed people. I'm doing that. You need to do that. Find a friend. Take them. Get them baptized. Do this. Do works for Jesus. Watch Jesus lift you up. And when you know that what step you're at, what step you're at, say, Father God, God the Father, I see where I am. I'm at, Father God. I know where I'm at, Father God. I know my position in your army. I know, I know what it is, Father God. Say, Father, say, take me to the next step. Take me to the next step. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Glory to Jesus. His peace, his love. His love is so unconditional. You don't understand. I cried. You know, I, I'm a strong man, I can tell you that. I'm very spiritually strong and I'm very strong. But the thing is, it's like, you know, I cried for two hours, almost three hours today, all right? Because I, he, he, he showed me a vision that was so clear where he's going to take me. And I, <laughs> it would be wrong of me just to... He showed me a vision. Father God, can I give this... He showed me a vision that he's given me a very big church one day. Because I keep telling him what I'm going to do. If I stay in this word, if I stay in this, if I keep praying to him, if I keep, if I keep opening it up to him, he's going to open up to me and he's going to give me my heart's desire. It's scripture. If you abide in what he says, the holy scripture, this is holy, this is sacred. There is a world. There is a Satan. There is a war going on. There's a spiritual realm. There is a God. There's Jesus. Jesus is coming back. You better be ready because we need to be preaching eternity. There, We're going to live forever. We need to realize that we need to live on the right team, work for the right team, or you can burn in our all-consuming fire. God said he's an all-consuming fire because he is an all-consuming fire. That's why my nickname is Blaze. And this is getting serious. And I want y'all to understand that God loves you very, very much. You know, and he showed me that. You know, Jesus loves you so much, he can show you visions from when you were a baby, when you were a kid, that you don't even remember. You don't even remember. He's going to be like, I, I had your back right there. I, that was me that did that. When you start doing things for him, he'll be like, remember that? That was me. That was Jesus Christ. Are you ready? Are you ready to do something for Jesus? Are you ready to stand up for Jesus? Because I can tell you what, one thing, I, I'm standing up and I don't ever want to lose his grace. I don't ever want to be without Jesus ever again. And I'll continue to stand up for him in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. I'm going to pray out real quick. Thank you all. Pray to God to take you to that next step. You know, even if it's just a baby, go to that next step. Baptize somebody yourself. You don't have to go to church to baptize somebody. You can baptize somebody. You're a Christian. You know, be a disciple for him. Anybody can do it. Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for everything that you do, Father God. I just want to thank you for your glory, for everything that, that, that you show me, Father God. I just want to thank you, Lord. Thank you for all the, the, every, all the blessings you continue to give me, Father God. In Jesus' name I pray, Father God. I pray that you, you, you show these people and they receive this and, and the way they need to receive it to grow spiritually for you, Father God. This is a, this is a battle and a war for to save little kids. Think of it a little, as a little kid. I'm sorry, but think of it, your kids, okay? Think of your kids. What do you want your kids to be like? Okay, Jesus wants your kids to be okay, but we got to teach them. We have to teach them, okay? I will teach you and you teach them. I'll teach them. Just We need to think of them in Jesus' name, Father God. I thank you for everything. Glory to you in Jesus' name, Father God. Let the ignite, let me torch, let me blaze, let me ignite these people in Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Thank you all so much.